everybody, it's Kendra here. It has been a while since I have sat down to give you a little update of all of the things that I have been working on. And I've got a pretty good pile. Now I do make these periodically and I have a playlist if you wanna go back and see some of the other updates of the projects I've been working on since I do have a variety of types of videos here on my channel. But today I have a ton of knitting, cross stitch, a little bit of sewing and some spinning to show you. So I'm gonna to try to keep it by section so you can skip around if you want to, but I feel like I've been dividing my time mostly between the knitting and the stitching for the past maybe around two months since my last update. So first up, I have a pair of socks and I had shown you progress on these in the fall. Um, this is some yarn that I dyed and I knit them up using a Crazy Sock Lady pattern called Oh, heel, heel do, do si do, or something like that. I'll put it on the screen because I can never really remember the sequence of those words. But yeah, this is the pair of socks. Ooh, they're clean, but I wash my socks in the washing machine and sometimes things that cling to them. So these are the finished socks. It's really neat. They have just stockinette on the back and then on the front is the kind of zigzag pattern. So I'll pull one off the sock blocker so you can see the whole front has this shape to it. And these were knit cuff down with a heel flap, which is not my preferred method of making socks, but I think, I mean, they turned out nicely. They're really fun. Something a little different for self-striping yarns um, where they still, still you can tell they're striping and everything, but they have a, just the pattern on the front. So I have been wearing and washing these probably like a dozen times since I made them because I made them back in December or finished them then and you can see that there's some like very light felting on the bottom they're super washed yarn and everything but it just gets a little bit fuzzy when they are washed with everything else in the washing machine but I don't mind that at all and yeah I think they're a really nice pair of socks so back in December, I think it was around the second week of December, I realized I usually make my kids Christmas sweaters and I hadn't planned on making any this past year. But as it got closer, I was thinking maybe I should make something. I wasn't really sure. So I decided to call them winter sweaters. I got some yarn from Michael's from Curbside Pickup and I thought I'd see if I could get them done. It was only a few weeks till Christmas, so I wasn't really optimistic, but I thought by being winter sweaters, they're not you know specifically for Christmas or anything. And so I used Loops and Thread Impeccable yarn, which I just did a little review on that yarn so I talked about these sweaters a bit there but I will also show them here as well so the main yarn is loops and thread impeccable but I did use a couple contrasting colors for the color work and all of these were worked with the strange brew pattern by tin can knits which is just like a recipe for color work for different weights of yarn and different sizes so starting with the largest one you can see the color work at the top there and then it just kind of comes down. So this one I made, I think, in the 8 to 10 size. And this is the... It used part of the chart from the Sunset Highway sweater by Caitlin Hunter, which I've made for myself in the past, but I didn't have the child size version, so I just used part of the chart. The next one down. This one here, I just drew out the pattern myself. And you can see this is, I think, around the, si uh, the size 4 to 6 but pretty basic. They all just have a bit of color work at the top and are solid the rest of the way down. Very simple. This is the youngest one. I think it was size two to four and I just drew out this pattern as well. So all together we have this set that's kind of coordinating but not super duper matchy and I am really happy with how these turned out and I think they'll fit the kids for a while still. It's been a really cold winter so it's nice to have some thick sweaters. Well they're worsted weight but they feel a lot denser than some of the sweaters I make so. Anyways, these ones that were done in December as well. So I did do some knitting and things for Christmas and I've shown some of that in the past and I did some more in December, but I don't have any of that and I'm not gonna talk about it. Um, but anyways, I am going to go on to now like the January knitting I did. And I made a make nine in January of some of the things I wanted to do this year, both knitting and stitching. Uh, but one of them was the E sweater by Alicia Plummer. And I had picked up this pattern last year and I had kind of modified it to make a child size version for my son with a fingering weight but the pattern itself is written for a worsted weight adult size. They do have other versions but that's the one I have and so I was really wanting to make one for myself too and I'm kind of getting down on the sweater yarns that I have in my stash and I'm not really wanting to buy more supplies at this point. So I decided to combine a few yarns and I dyed them. So I started off with two different colors of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. And I have made sweaters out of both of these colors before, but I decided to dye them and remake them. Again, I did a video that kind of 
went over this briefly, but I thought I'd show you the finished sweater. And this here, ooh, it's dark, but is my finished sweater. <laughs> So it is made out of the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, but I did over dye it. And then I went back and I lined the neckband here so it lays a little nicer. It has this drawstring at the top. It's a nice casual sweater. And it's just very basic otherwise. It's just the neckline itself that I like the most with the cowl neck. And yeah, this is my finished sweater. This is for me. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. I don't really have a reason to dress up most of the time so casual sweaters are where it's at for me and I really like this style and I'd like to make more of these ease sweaters. So in the spirit of kind of using up some of the things that I have on hand and things that I like and love to would love to use but I just didn't have anything in mind for, I decided to use up some of my hand spun and make another sweater. So this one I didn't use a pattern for. You know, I often for a basic sweater will just use the Tin Can Knits flax sweater, but my biggest issue with that is that often my necklines end up a little bit too wide, and so I decided to just kind of do my own thing and start with a cast on that felt nice and nice and high on my neck and uh, go from there. So this is my finished hand spun sweater. It is pretty cropped, and that's because I do want it to wear with skirts or dresses but it only uses three colors. And each of these colors, I mean, I've dyed and spun, but they're all different fibers. So this top color here is some Superwash BFL. The middle one is Superwash Merino. And the bottom one is um, Peruvian Highland Wool. So the bottom one's a little bit like scratchier than the, other, than the other two, but I don't notice it when it's all together and especially it's lowest down. So it's not like right up on my neck or anything. But yeah, the Merino and the BFL are both super soft and squishy. They're all dyed a little bit different, the bottom being the brightest, the middle being this muted with lots of darker colors, and the top has a lot of purple in it. So I just kind of striped them to one another, and I think it turned out pretty well, even between the sleeves and the body of the sweater, that it, uh, they kind of fit together, even though it was very <laughs> unexact and just like saving a little bit of yarn to use for the sleeves, but I used up almost all of all three yarns. And I think it turned out really nicely. Something a little different than what I usually make. So yeah, this is the next sweater that I made over the past couple months. I also crocheted the fox that was in my last video. I'm not gonna show that right now. I didn't bring it down, but that was another project that I worked on this over the past couple months here. And last of all, so I have been receiving Knit Crate for almost like a couple years now, and uh, they actually just send it to me to use as I want to make in videos or whatever. And so I'm really appreciative of that. And I think I still have a coupon code that works if you're interested in checking them out. I'll put it in the description box. So this month I got this really soft, pretty, like a ballet pink yarn. And it has Stellina, it has Silk, and it has Merino in it. And my daughter was all excited about it. And you know, I. I'm happy to make things for her that she loves. So instead of making socks, which was her first request, I thought I would try to make a top for her. Now she's in like around a size eight clothing. And so I didn't know if I would have enough since I only had like around that 400 yard mark, but I decided to use the raindrops pattern by Tin Can Knits. Again, I'm such a fan of theirs. And a while ago they had a little pattern sale where I think it was, so buy one, get one free or get one 50% off or something. And since I love their pattern so much, I got two. Too. And um, so Raindrops was one of them. It's one I've looked at for a long time. I love the lace detail on it. Um, so anyways, I decided to use that pattern, but instead of making like a long sleeve sweater, I decided to make it a top. So I just finished this. It's still a little bit damp. So you'll have to excuse that. So it has this lace along the top and it just has a rolled hem and I decided to stick with the rolled hem, the top of the sleeve, so simple. And then the body was knit with some ribbing at the bottom very lightweight it used almost all of those 400 yards but I thought for a sweater this size or for a top that's not too bad at all and it's just super light pink and sparkly and it's a really really pretty yarn I don't think it's reading how how it actually looks it's just a kind of like a ballet pink So this is my most recent project. It didn't take too long at all. And like I said, it's still just fit drying from the blocking. I haven't taken pictures or anything yet, but I think it looks even better on. It just, 
It sits nicely and I'm really happy with it and she's really excited about it too. So that brings me to my current work in progress for knitting and I am using up some of the scraps of my impeccable yarn um, and I had a pretty good sized ball of this teal color and I decided to make a baby sweater for a gift and I am using the second pattern I bought from Tin Can Knits back in their sale and that's the antler cardigan. Now I have made a ton of antler hats and have often thought about trying to just use the chart to put it in a sweater but I just thought I'm gonna get the pattern and uh, let them do the work for me to put it into a cardigan. They also have a pullover version, but I am making the baby size and I think the sweater with the hat would make such a cute little baby gift. So normally when I make sweaters, I almost always do like top down raglan, you know, that's like my go-to. Uh, but this one is bottom up. Bottom up's not my go-to. I have done it a few times, um, but I decided to just follow the pattern as it is. I didn't realize that until after I started it or got the pattern and you know, got ready to go. But I it starts with the sleeves. So I'm making the six to 12 month size. And so the sleeves are here, they are done. And I just started on the body. So again, this is the bottom of the cardigan. So I knit up from here, I joined it with the sleeves and then it has the cabling on the yoke. So I think that's gonna be really cute. And if I have enough yarn, I will do a matching hat. Otherwise I will do a coordinating hat. And I think that'll be just fine. Baby knits are such a fun little project and I like to have a few things ready to go when I know that people are going to be having babies soon. So there you go. So next up, we are going to do some cross stitch. I have really enjoyed stitching over the past few months. Um, we'll see how that changes through the summer. I sometimes think it's nice to take a break from like wool and do stitching instead, but sometimes, you know, the opposite's true and knitting something really easy to pick up where stitching takes like a little more focus and attention, at least for me. So I'll show you what I have done so far, starting with two items that I fully finished, which means I had finished the stitching, I think last time I showed you, but I got frames for them. So I'll just show you how they are looking like on my wall now. First up is the How I Met Your Mother samplerish piece. It has all the quotes on it. And I just got a very simple black frame. It barely fits in here. Technically you can see it all, but it's not a great fit. It's not a great frame, but without custom making something, it's kind of the best I could find that wasn't super, well, it, was, it wasn't even about price. It was the only one I could really find that fit it easily. So I do have the glass on it, um, but yeah, it's just very simple, long skinny black frame. That works for now, but you know, could always be updated in the future um, because it is such a close fit on the side. But to be honest, I didn't leave a ton of fabric on the sides, uh, but I don't have it secured in here like super well. So I can always update that if I want to in the future. My second that I fully finished was the dimensions kit, the three bird watchers. It has these kitties with the birds and I got this frame here. It's like a really light wood color. I have this, I don't have ah, my edges all finished or anything. I just popped it in to see how I liked it and I like it. It has the stand on the back and so I just have it sitting by my sink and every time I'm like doing dishes I look at it and I'm just I'm really happy with it and I guess that's the motivation to keep finishing things because I like things for the process of working on them and I kind of forget that it's really nice to look at my work after the fact and it makes me really happy to like notice the little details again and to think about the project um, just you know on a daily basis. So this one got fully, fully finished too. I'm gonna leave it up even though it is kind of wintry, but uh, you know, maybe if I make another project that would fit there in the future, I could switch them out, but for right now it's gonna stay up. My next stitching piece is finished, but not fully finished. It is Hedgehog by Micah Stitch Designs on Etsy. I knit this on 32 count linen with this polka dot. I think it's called like cream and brown, cream and white, cream and brown dots, cream and natural dots, something like that. But here is the hedgehog. So the designer has a whole series of these animals that are, she has it listed as like animals in sweater with mug or something. And I'll link it down below so you can go check it out. But oh, there's a lot of back stitching in this piece. You can see all these um, spines on him. He has just so many colors of back stitching. All that snow and the sweater. It's really effective. I think he's just adorable. But yeah, it was a lot of back stitching. I had to take a little at a time because it was slow going. 
So part of the reason I haven't fully finished him is because I am considering stitching some of the other ones in the series. At first I left it on the big piece of linen and thought, well, we'll see, like maybe I wanna stitch them together. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, I'll do them separate and I can either finish them separately or maybe I can put them together in like a little wall hanging, like have a row of them with like a quilted border or something. I thought it would look really nice. So I just cut them out, but I am still, holding off on deciding if I'm gonna do any of the other ones. I love the patterns, but again, the all the back stitch kind of makes me hesitate a little bit. Um, and, but I think they would be really cute to display like every winter. So it's a maybe right now. I think I'll probably stitch like one or two more, but uh, I haven't committed or started anything yet. Also the patterns, I think they're like $13 and they have sales every now and then, but I mean, I'm sure it's worth it. I'm happy to support designers, but if you're doing like a series of them, that adds up really fast. And so that's just another hesitation. For All right, so on to stitching progress. Now I have to say before I get closer that for Christmas, I was given a Kindle Fire, which is something I had kind of been talking about for a while. And one of the main reasons I wanted it was for the app Pattern Keeper. Now, I don't know, I know a lot of you are maybe not stitchers, but for big intense designs, like the full coverage, or like I have a Heaven and Earth Designs piece I've been working on, I have thought about it for a while. So up until I received this, I had my pattern for my Responsible Woman piece in this duotang. I printed it off and I'll show you one of the pages that, I don't know, I don't think you'll be able to stitch it from like one page. I'll just show you a little piece of it, I guess. But okay, so here's the hand page. And this is the part, I am doing a no background version. That's why there's so much blank. And then I just find the stitches that um, color them in. So when I came to where the pages were divided, it started to become more annoying. And I'll show you an example here. I'll show it from back here. On this page, this is like half of this dog. Half the dog is on the other page. And so the colors are kind of scattered between the two. So it's like a lot of flipping back and forth to find the symbols you're looking for um, to be able to stitch it without, because I'm not doing it like square by square, I'm doing like a little section, like the dog all has similar colors. And so I'm trying to find all the colors all of one color and completing it in that section and then moving on to the next and completing it section at a time. So when you're looking between pages, I found that I was missing symbols and then it takes like twice as long to go back and get another piece of thread. And so many people rave about Pattern Keeper and I have to say, I'm sold. So it's this program that has my design in it. And as you zoom in, it has all of the symbols and you can see like it goes by 10 by 10 square. It can be in here. Uh, these are ones are completed, so you'll just see the color and not the symbol. But what you can do is search by symbol and highlight all of the ones, all of the stitches you have left of that color. So if we come in here where I'm working, if you go into the little magnifying glass and you select that color, it highlights them all. So as you zoom out, you can see, oh, I need to bring it back up to this section here. And it's really easy to find the stitches you want. So while you have that color on your thread, you can keep working. That's a really brief understanding of it, but it also shows stats, like how many stitches I've done today, how many total stitches. This one has 48,273 stitches on it and I will show you where I'm at right now. Just took it off my Q-snap. This is my piece. So again, the title is Responsible Woman. The artwork is by James Christensen and it is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is the no background version and I dyed my fabric to kind of mimic the original pattern. I'll bring it in here for you. You can see I had most of the lady and the baby in, in the blanket or the wrap done before. There's that dog I was talking about that was split between two pages. A lot of those colors aren't used anywhere around there, so it's really helpful to stitch the dog all together instead of dividing it up. But you can see this is the start of a broom, and I actually want to kind of move in and do that soon, I think. There's some flowers. You can see she's got a notebook with feathers on it. Down here, this spoon, you would not believe how many colors are in that spoon. Every stitch was a different color. <laughs> and so as I was working on it, it like did not look like a spoon to me at all because there's green and white and all these colors. But as you pull it back, you can tell a little more, I think. But she's got a timepiece and just all sorts of little things that are coming to life as I work on it. 
I'm also, I just love these uh, spools here. I just finished those. Again, so many colors in them, but as you pull it back, it's like, oh, that's what it is. It's not always apparent when you're just looking at it stitch by stitch because there are just so many tiny little stitches in there. So this has taken a lot of time and work over the past few months and I kind of work on it in bursts it feels like. I feel like I've kind of been in a burst for the past week or two but then I hadn't worked on it for like a couple weeks before and I got really excited about it but then I just like need to give myself a little break from it and when I come back I'm really excited to work on it again. So I think that method works for me uh, but yeah I'm just loving this piece and every time I pick it up I'm so excited to see it come to be. Seeing each component come and like go from being just odd random stitches to looking like actually something, especially from a little bit of a distance, is really satisfying and it's really enjoyable. Now I do have another cross stitch piece I started at the end of December. I had realized I had finished up all my Christmas stitching and then I had nothing on the go. So I decided to start a few pieces that I could kind of easily pull out. To me, sometimes starting, it's exciting, but it's also, it takes time and effort to figure out what I want and sometimes like making those decisions isn't a lot of fun. So I like having a few things started that I can pull out whenever. This one here is called Pinky uh, by Jean McIntosh. Uh, this is a pattern that my grandma started and I have her original stitching but I have decided to restart it. Um, and that's partially because I didn't have the, the color she was using and um, I just felt like my DMC colors that matched weren't exactly the same. Plus the pattern calls for a lot of anchor flosses that I don't have and I'm probably going to convert most of them to DMC. So I just thought it might be easier to start over. Plus she was doing it on a Ada, but there's a lot of one over one stitching and doing that on an even weave or a linen is a lot easier. So this is a 32 count white linen. And I'll take my, I've been stitching this one in a hoop. I'll show you where I'm at. Don't have too much of a start on it yet. Initially, I felt like this was a nice kind of relief from my one over one 25 count um, hade that the one that last one I showed you. But I started working on it and I got started working up to her face and her face is one over one on 32 count, which is honestly not a ton of fun because those are really teeny little stitches as well. So I don't know, that's why I've kind of put it away for a little while, but I'll come back to it and do some more. These are just the ribbons that are gonna go around her head here. Around her head here, this is the bottom of her face. So there's not too much done on that. I worked on it for about like a week and then I set it aside for a bit, but I should come back on to it. And I was thinking about doing the more of the ribbon around her head first. I don't have all of the threads for this piece yet, but I have most of the ones for her and her dress. So I thought I'd start with that and then I can pick up more as I need. I mean, I'm sure it'll take me a while to get much further anyways. I have one more stitching whip. I have kind of barely started, but I just wanted to try out. So I picked up a little while ago another pattern from Heaven and Earth Designs. These are the really complex full coverage designs. And I wanted to do one that I could do square by square rather than my responsible woman that is not full coverage. So there's a lot of like negative space. So I decided on a chart called The Potting Shed by Amy Stewart. There's a regular version and a mini version. The mini version just is, I mean, shrunken down. There's a lot of confetti, like a lot of color changes, but it's smaller. So that's the one I decided to do. And I, back in the summer, had picked up some of this Easy Grid uh, that has a 10 by 10 blocks marked on it. So I decided to just use some of the colors I had and start putting in some stitches. Using the grid as my guide, and I just wanted to kind of see how it was. So I got just a baby, a baby start on it. Maybe spent a, a few days working on this, or a week or so, I'm not sure. But again, using Pattern Keeper, it's really easy to find your squares, and um, yeah, doing a bunch of the black in the corner here. So I'm not too far yet, I'm not working on it too seriously. I really do wanna do Responsible Woman first. I really just wanted to get it started, and it is nice to have a few different things to switch between when I get tired of Responsible Woman and need a little break from her. Okay, moving on. I have two skeins of yarn I'm going to show you for spinning. I haven't really done much since January when I was really doing a ton of spinning to focus on reviewing the 
Flyology spinning wheel. Now, I was a beta tester for them and I did a video about it and briefly showed these, but I thought I'd show you the yarn in a little more detail. Some of those yarns I ended up using in that hand spun sweater I already showed, but the first one here is just these 50 grams of superwash merino. I had dyed a big braid of these similar colors and I just used the leftovers on this 50 grams of merino and I just loved it. It had this orange and a green and I don't know, I just wanted to see how it would come together and I think it's so pretty. It's like almost the, the orange turned to be this sandy peachy color since there was some white left in it and it's so soft. You can tell it's just floppy <laughs> because it's so soft and it's, I don't know, I thought I put in a decent amount of twist and it is, but uh, it didn't give it the stiffness that sometimes happens when you do a lot of twist. It's been sitting wound up for a while now, but here is that yarn. So many little colors and shifts and changes. It's so pretty. I'm not sure what to do with it yet, but I just loved working on this and it really surprised me on how it turned out. And to me, that's one of the fun things about spinning is seeing the way that colors shift and change um, as you spin them up. The other one is this one right here. I wanted to share a little bit more about it. So when I got my Plyology wheel, the creators of the wheel sent it to me and they had sent me two little mini bats with it with some unknown fibers. They were super soft and fluffy and that's just the white. So I spun up the white single and I really decided that instead of applying it on itself, I would apply it with this um, single I had left over of some Coriadale that I didn't have enough of. It was just like from having too much on one of my bobbins basically. But when it all spun together, I think it turned out really nice. Gives it such a nice barber pulling throughout the whole thing. And it kind of shifts between the light lilac -y purples and then there's some uh, gray in there too. It's like a blue gray kind of. I think those shifts are pretty subtle, but it's really nice. There's also some nice fluffies that was just part of the bat. I'm not really sure what it was, little nips in the bat that uh, stuck around for the finished spin. I think this would make a really nice hat or something. So that might become that at some point. I also finished this yarn, which was a Falkland that I spun with some Holstgarn. It's what I used to make my fox out of, um, that Amigurumi fox. But I do have a pretty good size cake of the yarn left too. So just thought I'd show you that one. All right, so we have sewing and I actually have some resin that I'm gonna show you as well while we're here. First up was a dress. Again, I showed it in a video, so I'm just gonna very briefly show it here. It is out of a really stretchy knit fabric. Um, and this is the finished dress. I don't think it's gonna show that well, but anyways, I'll make sure to link that video if you wanna see it. I have it on me in that in that one, but I have been wearing it a ton so far, like once a week kind of thing. It is so soft. I just love the feel of it. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how the fit is and everything. So I'm considering making a few more dresses like this, but this one got completed about a month ago. And the one that I'm wearing right now, I actually dyed. It's kind of a dusty pink and I used some denim blue rip dye and dyed it this more purpley color. This is the pattern for the floral dress that I used. And a while ago, and I probably showed it in a video at that time, I made this dress here. I saw this chambray sort of fabric at Fabricland like more than a year ago and I really liked it and I held on to it to make a dress. I had this pattern here I had planned to make it with. And when I attached the sleeves, I decided to leave the bottom. So it had this design all along the bottom selvage of the pattern and I, or of the fabric. I decided to leave it as is, which made kind of a long sleeve. And once I got it on, I left it on because this was kind of like my idea. I wanted to keep the selvage fluffies and whatever instead of just hemming it. But over time I realized I didn't love that. And I didn't love how the sleeves fit. I felt kind of pulled on my back, like maybe the, this width wasn't quite long enough at the top here. So I decided, as you can see from that, to uh, unpick the seams of this dress. I think I'm just gonna leave it as kind of like a tank top, but I'm gonna finish this side seam. I'm just showing you my progress. I just ripped it out last night. Just decided I'm not wearing it because of these sleeves. What good is it to me at this point? I need to do something about it. So I ripped off the sleeves and I am going to finish it on the sides here. 
I really like how, oh, it's not laying flat now, of course, but uh, I think the neckline turned out really nice. Although it looks like there's some wrinkles, but really it's just been in my closet for like a year. I've worn it once or twice, but really not a lot, not enough. And uh, I think the dress generally turned out well, and I was really sad that I didn't end up being super happy with the, with the arms. So I'm excited to give this a new chance. And I think I will be able to wear it both more in the summer because it doesn't have such a long, heavy sleeve, but also with cardigans. I think it'll look really nice and it won't be bunching up in there anymore. So this is my current sewing project um, that I just need to buckle up and finish it. Um, again, I just love this fabric still and I think I will wear it a lot once, it, once I solve that problem. So I'm showing you as some accountability to keep working on this. All right, so I have some resin type things to show you now. I have been dabbling in resin to make stitch markers for my Etsy shop, which has been a lot of fun. I've been trying different molds and things, but while I've been doing this, my husband has actually been working on a little 3D printer and he has been making some things both for my Etsy shop and for me to put resin in. And so I thought I'd show you some of my favorite things that I've been making resin wise. So first of all, we are both kind of new at this. I've never done resin and he's new to the 3D printer, but he's been making me some just little shapes and things to make stitch markers out of. They're very lightweight and they're really cute. I've been helping make some of the designs and then he'll convert them to printable files. That one's just as is. But we've been trying some other designs. This one I didn't end up, it spilled out a little bit, so it's not gonna be like for sale, but just as an experiment, different ways of holding the resin. Got this one here. And we were working on some needle gauges. And so I kind of was explaining how, like for me, I only use the smaller sizes. So we have been doing sizes one to 11. And so if you know it, what that it's one to 11, this is the range of sizes and they're like a keychain. They're a little heavy. They're not really meant to be a stitch marker or anything, but I filled them with these really sparkly resin bits. There's those ones. And then I've got a couple more here. And it's been really fun to just experiment and see what works. They're very shimmery, glittery. I know that doesn't always read on the camera too well, but very simple. You can just stick your needle in to see what size needle you have. I've also been using some of my molds and keychains. This is this super glittery cloud. Again, it's really hard to get it to read properly. It's sparkly, glittery cloud one. These ones here, I've got a ton of these heart shapes and I'm working on a bunch of kitties. They're mostly clear with the glittery bits in them. And these ones are pretty small so they can be clipped on to your knitting or your crochet or use them as a keychain. I just grabbed a couple, but I've been making a whole ton of these lately. Um, we've got some glittery pinkish sparkle. It's like a deep pink. A kitty and a heart. And I also made a few of these trays. These aren't for sale. These were just kind of for me. Um, and I kind of damaged my silicone mold, unfortunately, but I made a few of these and they're, they're really fun. Um, it's just got a bunch of glitter at the top and then the larger bits of glitter at the bottom. And it's really just a nice little dish for holding collections of stitch markers and things that I've been working on. So I wanted to show you that um, just kind of its own little craft project. It's been really fun to experiment and try out what kind of different techniques and stuff. So thank you so much for watching this video and being invested in the thing this, that I'm working on. I kind of go all over the place. I try to just stick to the things that are inspiring me at the time. And I'm really happy with the things that I've made this winter. It has been a long winter in a lot of ways. Lots of really cold days, being home with kids. And um, as much as there are good things and bad things, having crafting really does help. And it's been really beneficial for me this winter I know so thank you so much for being here with me so until next time bye